right? Let's do this synthesis problem. So the starting material here. Let's work this out together. So, any suggestions about how we can think about this? Well, there's a good leaving group. You have to oxidize something. And we have to oxidize something to get it now. Yeah, how do we know there's going to be an oxidation going on? Remember, oxidation is when you're oxidizing a carbon when it's forming more bonds to oxygen. Well, this clearly has more bonds to oxygen over here. Or in general, oxidation, the more general definition of oxidation is forming more bonds to electronegative atoms. Well, here we started with one bond to an electronegative atom, and we ended up with two bonds to electronegative atoms. So that's good. We'll need an oxidation eventually. Any other suggestions? How do we think through this? What do we need to do? Go on the bromine over the tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we want something to attack, attack the primary <coughs> carbon. Mm -hmm. And to attack the primary carbon, we need either a weak base from SN2, if we want SN2, or a strong base if we want E2. That's not working. Yeah, it shouldn't be working. It shouldn't be working. We don't have any double bonds, so we should. Is that what we need? So we want SN2. Yeah. So yeah, so it's good to decide what mechanism we want. So what have we decided? What mechanism do we want? SN2. Yeah, why not SN1? Because that would that's not in the primary. Yeah, you can't do an SN1 on a primary, for one thing. Okay, good. And do we want elimination? No. No, we should probably stay away from elimination. So what reagent would give us an SN2 here? Um, a weak base. Like... Any thoughts about that? Does the cyanide sound good? Sure, we can yeah. any of them. Okay, now let's go through this a little bit more. Um, so all, what you guys are doing is you're focusing on the starting material and you're asking, what can I do to the starting material? Now it's a perfectly good thought process, but there's another important thought process for synthesis problems. The other thought process is, is focus on the product, focus on the final product and ask, how could I make this? Focus on the final product and ask, how can I make this? So let's do this, do we know any reactions that would make a functional group like this? Carbonyls. Let's be more specific. So what reactions do we know that could make uh, a functional group? PCC. Yeah, PCC. Okay. Now, what do we have to add the PCC to to get something that looks like this? Try writing down on your piece of paper what the, uh, what the intermediate would have looked like that we want to add the PC to. All right, good. Let's try writing down what that would have looked like. Okay, very good. Um, I think I've already mentioned to you guys how much I love the redraw and modify technique. So I'm just going to redraw this product and then modify it. I'm going to modify this so that um, it, uh, obviously this is not the intermediate we want. Uh, I need to modify this so this is the right uh, intermediate. Well, remember the whole point of this is to do an oxidation. That is, this reagent adds a new um, bond to oxygen. So, um, and we have to ask, we ask, so what functional group does PCC operate on? What functional group does PCC attack? Alcohols. Alcohols. All right, well then we're pretty much done right there. I have to change the carbonyl into an alcohol. Does it That's matter all. if we still write the H, or can we just like... Doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you show the hidden hydrogens or not. Doesn't matter. The okay. convention is... The convention is that people usually show the hydrogen on an aldehyde. Oh, okay. For some reason, there's a convention that you usually show the hydrogen on the aldehyde, although I think you would get full credit even if you left it out. But usually, that is, if there's a hydrogen on a carbonyl carbon, that's usually shown. We know we usually don't show 
hydrogens on ordinary carbons. So, no, our question, I mean, my question is, down there, where you put the OH on, like, mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. where does it be fine if it was just instead of where the H is? Oh, yeah, well, uh, is this a stereo center? No, there's two hydrogens. No, there's two hydrogens. Yeah, there's going to be two hidden uh -huh. hydrogens here. Okay. Okay. Um, there's another hydrogen we haven't drawn in. Two hidden hydrogens. So it doesn't matter really how you draw the bonds when something's not a stereo center. It doesn't really matter how you draw the bonds when something is not a stereo center. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you could draw it any way you like. But this is probably the most logical because it shows most clearly the relationship between this intermediate and this product okay. over here. All right. So uh, this is the product uh, that we would uh, that we would have gotten uh, here. Let's also so let's also use the handout for uh, what should I call it? Um, yeah, the handout we just went over at the end of the last time. Alcohol oxidation and reduction. So we're looking at page one of the handout on oxidation, uh, alcohol oxidation and reduction. Um, find this compound on the handout. Well, first of all, what type of functional group is this? Aldehyde. Yeah, a carbonyl with a car one carbon chain and one H is an aldehyde. So let's find the aldehyde. Um, and the question was, what do you have to add PCC to to make an aldehyde? Well, what does the chart say? What do you have to add PCC to to make an aldehyde? Primary alcohol, that might have been helpful to us here in getting the starting material. So you can kind of use the, ch the, car uh, the chart as a crutch at the start to get the right starting materials. This is a primary alcohol, right? Yes. Now, ultimately, you really shouldn't have needed the chart, right? Uh, you don't even have to think that this is primary. All you have to do is say, well, before we added PCC, this was not a carbonyl, it was an alcohol. So you could just use redraw and modify, but maybe the chart helps as well. Okay, so that gives us this. Now, obviously, we're not done yet. All we've done here is we've said what the last step of our synthesis is going to be. We know the last step is going to be PCC. All right, now the name of the thought process I just went through is retrosynthesis. We just did retrosynthesis. So retrosynthesis is not a type of problem. Retrosynthesis is a tool that you use to solve synthesis problems. Retrosynthesis is a tool that you use to solve synthesis problems, and it, the name is more uh, forbidding than the, than the concept. All that retrosynthesis means is, you look at the product and ask how you could make it. That's all retrosynthesis means. You just look at the product and ask what intermediate could you uh, use to make that product. Yeah, it's backwards synthesis. Yeah, it's just like going backwards. Remember that you guys, it's all your instinct was to start with the starting material and to ask how we could change it. Well, sometimes that's very helpful, but you have to also always try to look at, this, at the product and ask, um, uh, looking at the product, you can ask how could we make this. And oftentimes that's going to be faster, so you have to watch out for that. Now, the way I wrote this is not the way your instructor would have written this retrosynthesis. The way your instructor would write it is like this. You guys seen this kind of double arrow here before? Yes. All right, so your instructor would write this like this, um, which is unfortunate because this is not a good technique for beginning students to use. You should never use this. So what does this kind of double arrow mean? All the double arrow means is that this is the product and this is the, the starting material that gave it. Um, but this is not a good technique for beginning students because all along we've been thinking of starting materials on the left and products on the right. And if we suddenly start switching around and putting the products on the right and the starting materials on the left, we're just going to get really confused by that. So how should you do retrosynthesis? You should do it just the way I have it on the board. Just go from right to left. When you're doing retrosynthesis, just write the product on the right and then put the intermediate that leads to it on the left. So I would recommend that you guys should really never use this double-headed arrow. That's not double-headed. How would I say it? It's never use an arrow that looks like this. This is not a good way for a beginning student to do retrosynthesis. When a beginning student does retrosynthesis, they should leave the product on the right and put the starting material intermediate on the left because that's what we're used to have done doing in all the other parts of the course. All right, and also the problem with this is it makes it seem like retrosynthesis is, again, some new kind of problem or reaction. It's not. It's just going backwards. Okay. Now, can you guys think of any reagents that would transform this into this? Oh, I was going to say NaOH, because we need to add an OH, but wouldn't that be a negative oxygen, which is a strong base? It is a strong base, 
So what are you worried about? What would could go wrong there? That wouldn't be SN2 then. What would it be? Oh wait, actually maybe it would because it's unhindered. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it would be unhindered. SN2, because it's not bulky. Oh, primary, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but that, 